How do men deal with their feelings and what are feelings? Yeah, that is a big deal because our previous video was on what it is to be a man. And this has been quite a manly place lately with a couple of Navy SEALs and other guys out here doing self-defense courses and, and even join the podcast. If you haven't seen them, go back and watch them. They're great. But it is a big deal for men to share their feelings. Most men don't even know what you know, how to recognize them. They just feel their anxiety and then they don't want anybody to know they have anxiety. So they just shut down. Then all of a sudden it, <laughs> the, the people that are you're emotional with, they start spiraling out of, you know, you all of a sudden you create this distance. Um, I mean, sometimes that is justified. You know, I mean, sometimes people actually give you some sort of disrespect in such a way that, you, you know, maybe it doesn't, rise to the level of you needing to try to fix anything. It's just, all right, you did that. I don't need to be around you anymore. That's That starts going off into a fork in the road. But just dealing with emotions, um, wow, uh, can be a daunting task. So uh, both of us were in the Army. <clears throat> and this is how I, I huh? deal with my feelings. One, I wasn't issued any in the Army. <laughs> So I don't have any. The second way is 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 drinking, and Sarah can contest to this that the you know and as a guy I kind of hold back. I'm very reserved. I don't say a lot. I won't you know let everybody know how I feel. But when I have a few drinks in me, I just it's like a floodgate. I am all this and that. I can't I'm, wait. I I every time I'm like, are you drunk yet? Yeah, are you yeah, drunk? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about feelings. Yeah. But it, it, I mean, it shouldn't be that way. <laughs> well, but it, it just helps break the barrier, you know, because like I said, I wouldn't issue feelings. It kind of knocks off the edge and kind of cracks the door open so you can walk through it. Yes. You're not so on guard once you have a couple of drinks to let, let that down. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense. As but long as you don't use that, that crutch. It goes back to your childhood. Like, we're not taught to talk and communicate and tell how you're feeling and what's going on with you today. It's this podcast. That's why we talk about so many wide variety of subjects. So, many, so they, some people do have to, like, loosen up and have a drink or two yeah. before they're willing to open up and bear their soul and be vulnerable and... Like growing up, I mean, we didn't have a lot of people come and say, oh, I love you all. Oh, you're, you know, it's like, oh, you're very good. You're okay, good. Now, me with my kids, I'll tell them I love them. Y'all are doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. And just letting those guys know, you know, trying to break that shell out where I was like that. But, but yeah, you're Did, a, do, I have a question curse. for you, Matt. Did, do you uh, think, because you're really a funny guy and you're super fun to hang out with and have been for 50 years, uh, do you think that humor helps in the, in some cases hide or disguise or squash those emotions? Yes, Absolutely. it's your body armor. It's your body armor. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyone that is funny uses humor. <laughs> that, thing, yeah. that means oh. we're suffering on the inside. Oh yeah, you know, I, mean, we, I don't think that's. I mean, I think that's true to a lot. To a lot. It is. I mean, you think about it. But me. I'm just kind of a, a fun guy. I like to be happy. And we talked about this in one of our right. other podcasts. You know, I'm going to choose to be happy today. I'm going to choose to be funny. I'm going to choose to enjoy every single second that I have. You know, I'm, I'm going to love that. I'm going to be fun and happy but there is a part where yes you know i'm i'm you know kind of reserved but i'm gonna throw humor out there you know take a look at robin williams funniest comedian in the world depressed like a motherfucker you know but you see these guys maybe will it was probably use. hillary took him out oh, hillary <laughs> And uh, but, it, list. but it's like you know those are my I'm just feelings. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm uh, Trump. Oh, wait, but. I don't care about Trump either. Really? Oh, anyway, we did, we did. Like, we're we're getting off topic. Yeah, this isn't political. But but those are all emotional. Oh God, yeah. control your feelings, people. Control them. I'm offended. Tell a joke. Hurry. That's a feeling. That's a feeling. Not a feeling. But uh, no, I think uh, yeah, I do use it some some cases to use humor to to break it, uh, break the you know whatever kind of stuff we're in. But some, some, you know, like, I mean, we'll be talking and I'll just blurt out, you know, uh, do you like dragons? <laughs> That's what it was. You know, or uh, ducks. Well, yeah, the ducks. Yeah, everybody knows a little bit. But we were watching this uh, TV show last night. It was uh, oh god, the wolf. 
um, Teenage Wolf with oh, uh, Michael yeah. J. Fox. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Back when we were kids. Yeah, the they old, were playing the beavers against the uh, dragons. dragons. Cool. And I was like, well, I used oh. to live in beaver. And then I said, oh, do you like dragons? She goes, yeah. I said, I'll be dragging my balls across your face. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> another than the topic for the podcast. But feelings. Those were me sharing my feelings. But you, feeling? but, you, but you were trying to get a, a laugh. <laughs> yes. Uh, and to, that's good because you were probably... No. <laughs> probably avoiding the subject. Uh, no, we didn't have like, a subject. Oh, you did? Oh. But I'll give well, you. Then maybe that's what he really wanted <laughs> to do. Oh, okay. And he wanted to make you laugh. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> maybe he wanted to make you cry. Dragon. He wanted to show you some, he wanted to bring out some feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Not emotional. Right. Physical. So All we've got on. our physical and emotional back now. <laughs> yes. That's what it was. It is difficult because go opening up with feelings because my dad oh man never like we didn't talk about anything of any substance the only thing uh, uh luckily for me he was uh in martial arts and was a bodybuilder so he would take me to the gym and i was always around it as a kid you know, from yeah, I got old pictures of me sitting on a bench in a, one of those old crappy little, you know, carry kid carry baby carry oh, thingies. Yeah. And you know, whatever. I don't never had to raise babies, <laughs> or whatever you call them. And you know, the uh, dragons, call dra them dragons, dragons. Yeah. <laughs> but the extent of our conversation was all growing up was, oh, what'd you do for chess? Yeah. How'd you do your leg workout? <laughs> you know. And it wasn't any even in depth about that either. Yeah. Or maybe every now and then there would be like, oh, hey, try to use this technique because it's a little, you get a better burn or something like that. There was never uh, something of meaning. Like any one of the topics that are in our over probably 300 plus podcasts, not one of those that are important for the development of a young man. Yeah or woman were ever discussed growing up. So maybe that's why, one of the reasons why, that uh, we started uh, this sanctuary and this uh, expansion of human understanding because I don't think we can solve any problem anywhere until we learn how to acknowledge, express our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings. The world can't be better if we can't fix ourselves individually through understanding our feelings. And that's also communication. Right. So, I mean, you're you're hitting on a topic for, for not just a man and a woman, but for anyone in the conversation. So if you're communicating with someone and you're actually getting to that next level of whatever it is, you've got to be able to communicate, you've got to be able to express. And if you're holding that in, then that's a, you're, and, not, a, you're not truly expressing, you're not truly communicating. And that has, part of sharing your feelings or emotions and thoughts also require a safe place to be, mm -hmm. no matter if you're a man or a woman. So if Jill does not want to hear my feelings today, it's probably a bad time to try to share them with her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, vice versa. But it takes two people or more to be open and willing, like we're doing now, to have a discussion about feelings. Mm -hmm. I feel so emotional. <laughs> the, is there a tear? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> is, that is what is um, the other side of that equation is, okay, I, I recognize this feeling. I recognize this emotion. And I want to be able to express it. But I also have to have the other party open to, to it, it to so it. that I'm not in a, another feeling, an emotional state of if I share it, now I'm fearful of them not giving me respect. I'm fearful of them uh, telling me I'm dumb or feeling or getting rejection. that emotion, rejection, all of the other fears that come from that. And... You know, that is, even the toughest man has a really hard time with with sharing it because they know that they're tough. They know that they have knowledge about a bunch of things. They know they can take care of themselves. And at the same time, I don't want to express my feelings because I want to continue to be tough. Mm. 
And if I express my feelings and you reject me and you knock me down emotionally, then all of a sudden I don't feel tough anymore. So that's probably a big reason why most men don't want to open up. Was it a pride issue? For mm-hmm. sure, yeah. Not only pride, I think uh, the image of themselves. But like we talked earlier, I, I've like been that guy. a well-rounded man that can take criticism and stuff like that too. You but know. how will you Honest grow criticism. if you don't accept criticism? Like how are you growing as a person? If you- Honest criticism. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, even, whoever. Yeah, the other stuff you just dis- disregard yeah, it. I mean, you, don't care. You've got to be able to to open up in a sense to get the feedback because otherwise you you're just seeing yourself as you like what you see it's like your voice so i read this the other day you hear your voice it's muffled whenever i hear my voice the way that i speak you don't actually hear your voice until you hear a recording of your voice and you know your mom tells you you can sing growing up <laughs> i think that but i don't know i actually can sing see i could ask matt like how does my singing voice sound and, and, and how does that emotionally make you feel when he says you suck <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I should probably shut up. Like I've learned from that because I took someone else's honest criticism because I think I can hear my voice and I think I sound fucking amazing. Bruh. But I know when I hear it on a recording, I don't. Mm. So I need to know. I hate my it's voice. It's, a bit, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I love the way I sound. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> oh, I video my, I myself talking all the time. Dead. But no, you're right. I, I do hear different than you. And it's like, do I sound like that? Yeah. I no, you don't. Jesus you don't. Christ. <laughs> you know, but talking about uh, feelings, uh, some people will get their feelings hurt just by the simple thing of saying, hey, you're you suck at singing. But hey, your voice, hey, and whoa. then they shut down. But whose fault is that? It's whoever's getting their feelings hurt. To me, if I hurt your feelings when I'm being open and honest with you, then that's on you because I am being open and honest with you. Now, if I'm being a mean asshole and you, you know, then you're trying to hurt my feelings. Yeah, that's but that's thing. not open and honest. No. So if I'm being open and honest with you and I'm telling you how I truly feel and whether it's good or bad feedback and I'm not trying to hurt you in any way, if you get offended by that, then that is something that you need to deal with internally. That's right. Don't ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. That's how, <laughs> that's that's how you stay strong. Yeah. Don't, but, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one solution. Since we are a solutions oriented <laughs> podcast, there it is. Thank you, Matt. That, thank you. That's what I'm here for, folks. Great, great feedback. <laughs> Just don't talk to me. Well, yeah. I don't know how you get some guys to open up. Some guys like to brag. I just had somebody that's relatively close to me the other day tell me he has no feelings. I was like, huh? Like, how can you be happy? Not only happy, but are you are you insane? Like, there's are you just talking crap? Are you trying to make yourself look tough in front of me? What I don't get it. Uh, that everybody has feelings, unless you're. Uh, sociopath, psycho, something. Uh, other than that, everybody has feelings, whether you're a man or a woman. And if you don't, at least from my experience, if you don't share that and just let it out, then you're building like an emotional toxicity inside of you. And then that poisons all of your other relationships. Yes. Yeah. So my feelings are I don't like to talk about my feelings. That that's a feeling. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. You're it's that's guarded. how I feel. You're feeling guarded. I feel guarded. But it's why like, do you not like to talk about your feelings? Because I, I think it's the same thing over and over and over. What's your favorite color? What's your? I mean, these are like relationship things. Is you know, that hold on. Hold on. Feeling? Yeah, but it, but it's out. like the feelings that why don't I want to tell you that I'm I'm happy and I'm sad? Can you not? tell about my actions can you not see maybe sometimes Some people no. are fake though yeah, yeah like, and, like you're really good at uh, pulling humor out of your hat so no you disguise uh, your emotions so they can't tell yeah yeah okay good so good. now so now you uh you put on the you know the cia spy master yeah. and you're like hey no i'm uh i'm happy watch <laughs> I'm me happy. i'm happy <laughs> I don't want any trouble. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Jill, I'm happy. Are you offended? <laughs> I'm not offended. 
<laughs> but you're defensive. Uh, I am defensive. <laughs> that is uh, that's good to recognize, though, that we're at, you know we're having this discussion and we say, hey, well, what are the things? What are my defense mechanisms that prevent me from talking about my feelings so I can have more healthy relationships? Uh, you got to get to that point first before even expanding on. Okay, now I'm, I'm getting more comfortable talking about my emotions whenever they arise or something that's bothering me or whatever it is. Now, how do I best articulate that? How do I best start to talk in a way that I know that they'll be receptive to? How can, I, how can my emotions come across where they are uh, compassionate and understanding and tolerant and the other person wants wants to hear it because we're in that kind of relationship you know we're not going to go share our feelings with just some random joe blow you know we're only checking out at circle k uh, right. so yeah. Thanks, hey, how, how are you today the red bull oh i'm good you know i'm feeling <laughs> awful i've had this happen to me last week I... yeah we're not doing that some people do like to do that though <laughs> I mean, I, nursing I, yes yeah. yes i think it's important to share the emotions with people that you have those emotions with. Yeah, if you got something bad to say about somebody, uh, then don't say it to everybody else. Share that thought or emotion with that person mm-hmm. if they're always in contact with you. You know, I mean, it's one thing if somebody you know calls you for a reference or says, "Hey, you know, what's this guy like?" Uh, and he stirs up. You're like, you know, he screwed me that one time, and it, and then you're still mad at him. You're harboring a grudge. Very and, good point. And that actually brings you back around to the toxicity circle of if you're if you're holding all this in for to the person that it's directed to and I've dealt with this in a a recent friendship I'd go through a breakup in a friendship and I wanted to share my feelings with that person and I'm not it wasn't reciprocated like they knew how they knew what the conversation was going to be and they didn't want to accept it but right. they've gone and told everyone else. Well, I will we'll say just have this. the conversation with me. It's between you and I. That's right. These are, these are our feelings. These aren't everyone else's feelings. So let's talk about it together. I think that's almost the equivalent of a uh, like an emotional assault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when I say equivalent, it, it's exactly an emotional assault. So whenever people start hammering uh, out and broadcasting to the world, uh, something that is more intimate that deserves a private discussion and they talk bad about you and say crap behind your back that's a that's a problem and again that's that's something going on with that other person yeah not you Mm -hmm. and the only thing you can do in a response yeah yeah nip it in the bud yeah that's all you can do (laughs) shut it off what were you about to say so i was gonna say that if you want somebody to open up to you and talk to you about their feelings you can't start yelling because that's going to shut somebody no, down like quick. that yeah and you can't make them hear you any better by raising your voice and yeah. yelling. no and you can't walk in and go you know even in a calm voice you can't go you know why'd you do that that was really stupid you dumbass yeah i mean they're going to turn and run yeah I, they have to know later. that there's a there's an emotional connectivity and a love and respect for each other that Hey, what was up with that? But well, why'd you do that? Or you know, however you want to approach it, instead of uh, emotionally attacking them, yeah, or, or putting them, or whatever you say, you know, be cognizant of whatever you say has the potential of throwing up these emotional walls that you're not going to get through. So I was, I was listening. Blink twice if Jill's hurting you. <laughs> okay, and then. <laughs> The other thing, the other thing is Blink like some, four times if it's pleasurable. No, no. <laughs> I think he's got a twitch. <laughs> but the thing with me is like I know my emotions, I know where I feel it. But you can't just go one month. I can't just blurt out and tell this. You know, this is great. For me, it takes a long time. I want to really, really get to know that person. Oh, for of course, sure. I like spending time with you and doing things. And <laughs> but it takes. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, no, too late. You're going to have to rewatch this one. You're about to get throat punched. Yeah. But I mean, it takes a long time for me to really share and open up my feelings. So I think time 
For sure, Tom. You know, oh, it just sure. takes long. Well, you because don't want to talk about feelings unless you are actually having those feelings in your... Well, sometimes you, know, you just don't want to talk. You just want to have a good time and blah, blah, blah. But And sometimes nothing's bothering you. Yeah, so that, so, I mean, there's no, no reason to talk about anything. It's all those good memes. Is like the, the, the guy and the girl laying in bed and she's like, I wonder what he's thinking about. He's thinking about another woman, blah, 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 blah. And it just keeps going. And he goes... Those are so funny. I wonder if I put a duck in my thing. You know, just those <laughs> kind of little things. Right, right. right. You know, and, it's just, the man is so simple. Men are extremely simple. The so, women are mental. So we just defined <laughs> again <laughs> we did. what a man is. What is a man? We are simple. simple. <laughs> Name me a sandwich. One little box. <laughs> I'm just yeah, unless what? you're you know one of those uh, the soy boys that we've created now, wearing these little uh, tight jeans with bell bottoms or some crap. Uh, that's just insane to me. Let's see what I was wearing. That's my judgmental. <laughs> that's me being judgmental. And I'm, right I'm working now. on myself for that. So I'm acknowledging uh, my feelings about soy boys. Then they're kind of offensive to me. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging, I'm acknowledging soy that soy boy. You don't even have to do that to a soy boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a dandelion. <laughs> it's a feather. <laughs> what is oh my God. So, see, that is a, a real live right now circumstance of uh, an emotion coming out and sort of. You don't know how to deal done. with those feelings yet, and you got to learn how to. Well, process. I mean, I know how to, I know how I deal with them now. I'm just like, you little soy boy. And I'm, uh, so you got a problem with soy boy. Yeah, I got, I'm sort of getting condescending. Know, there's, there's a, there's a few in the basement. So what? What? Soy boys are the TikTok dancers. The boys. The, the lack of total masculinity. Uh, tre the trend following, uh, non-critical thinking, uh, little fairy boys. We went from I smoking a little marble issue reds to vaping banana Vape. And I'm trying to acknowledge that. Vapes. <laughs> trying to acknowledge the, well, I've but, already okay, acknowledged so, so. it, but it offends me uh, because I know that this massive number of that sort of mentality that's lacking any manhood is, is going to be the death of this country. So, and, and I know that that's a direct assault on, on my freedom later in life. I know that. That is what offends me. And, and to see that uh, the, the actions of that and the lack of any sort of knowledge about anything and uh, other than just wanting to wear uh, girls panties and be a goofball, like that's fine. Do that in your private. Don't run around uh, Forcing that on other people, the, these little soy well, boys. Well, that could be anything. That could, it could be, be a lot of things. Anyone for sure. could force anything on anyone else, and that could be determined as offensive if they're trying to push a certain way. Right, but I'm not saying that. Feel. I'm saying that this whole massive amount of soy boys are a direct threat to um, this country. I mean, yeah. it's a direct threat. So that I understand, I recognize all those things, and I'm trying to work through it. So I'm not an asshole to soy boys. I've really been trying. Um, well, like, the thing is, like it, I had a pit, those like, are the guys on. that wouldn't be able to protect us. Yeah, yeah. Won't. And, and, and I had that's not our man. I had an epiphany. Yeah, this them. is true. I had a very emotionally. But I could totally go and have cocktails driven, with one of them and have a great time. <laughs> driven emotional problem. That, you know, I'm having this dream and this dream, I wake up and this dream tells me that um, I have to love the fat, stupid, uh, mentally screwed up, extraordinarily fat people riding in a electric car at Walmart. I woke up thinking, uh, like, that was a weird dream. And I thought, do I need to do that? Why would I need to do that? Could I do that? Is that even possible to do that? Um, so I really started thinking about it. And I was like, wow, do I not like the big, fat, stupid people riding in electric carts at Walmart? And the answer was yes. Yes, I don't like them. <laughs> like, but I never thought about it before until this dream. And, and then I thought, well, they don't emotionally charge me, but can I... Could I love them? Could I understand them? Could I relate to them somehow? 
And then the more I started to think about it, it started to become an issue. I was like, okay, if I am placing judgment and um, anger on them, or maybe not anger, but you know, like frustration or irritation maybe is a better word. That's the feelings, Will. He just defined his anger. Yeah, so, so if I get over that, would that help me be a better person? And then that really, I start, you know, I write in my journal a lot. So I'm just writing this out and I'm like, this is strange. How can I not, how, why would I even think that? Why would I even want to like them? Why would I even care? That, I think, is exploring our emotions, exploring the, just not let everything be on the surface, diving into uh, what we think, how we feel, and, and separating that out as men do, some men, in a logical way and go, huh, I wonder why that is. I wonder why that that piques my frustration. I wonder why that makes me irritated. You know, the talks that we never had with our dads when we were young. Like if my dad would have sat me down and said, all right, son, why are you irritated about that? Yeah. Well, let's get on your nerves about that. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's deal with that. Let's figure that. Let's figure this out. Let's talk it through. Let's figure it. Come on. Let's, let's be men and talk about yeah, it. Discuss it. Come on. And instead, you just shoot away. And I think the lack that of that over the past, you know, I don't know, six, eight years has really uh, made me more curious about myself and others. So hence the, the reason for this podcast, because we talk about all these things. I think that is important for us to not just say, hey, I have these feelings. Why do I have these feelings? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from me as a child? Is it coming from because of being hurt in past relationships? Do I not want to love because uh, that means I'm fearful I'm going to get hurt? Oh, I can't do this because, oh, uh, no. How do we know if we don't examine? How do we know if we just tell jokes? How do we, how do we know if we... <laughs> <laughs> Where's the joke I'm now? To, I'm gonna have to look into that. <laughs> so all of those things make me think on a regular basis. Um, why? You know, like why? Like why do I love Matt? Like that's the uh, feelings. That? <laughs> Our feelings. I think it's important to recognize too. Like why do we hang around the people that we hang around? But though you are doing, your question was why did. I love Matt. Why do you love Matt? Why do you feel the way that you do about any one that you described? It's, it's on you. Your feelings are on you. Right. What they're going through, what they're dealing with, that's on them. That's right. You can't change anything in the world until you change yourself, until you. Well, I wasn't turn... talking about changing anything. I was just said, why do I love <laughs> Matt? <laughs> Going back Are you to getting your jealous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a fight! Mess, mess out of here. I don't want any trouble. Back to your original, we're talking about Walmart and wheelchairs. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, I got you. I mean, I'm just saying, as far as how you feel about anyone in this world, whether it's hatred, whether it's love, whether it's anger, whether you feel disappointed in them, any feeling whatsoever, if you direct that towards anyone else, it's on you. It, you are the reason you feel that way. For sure. And so regardless if someone's out there smoking meth or if they're robbing the Circle K or if they're praising God to the whole Almighty, they're, they're doing everything to give back to the community, regardless of what they're doing in their lives, it's up to you to work on you for sure and you can't focus on what they're doing and until you make yourself better and and do all the things and feel and figure out why you're feeling the way that you're feeling then you can well what you just out. said is perfect because whenever i was exploring the uh walmart scenario i feel like we need to work on this uh, <laughs> yeah let's do a little deep dive into the walmart well, well, well i started thinking about okay why would i make a snap judgment i don't i don't know them I've not had a conversation with them. Uh, the likelihood is they probably like everybody's excuse. Oh, I got a thyroid problem or something. No, you got a you got a food to mouth problem, and 
that's a little bit of an irritant, but like not enough for me to judge, like them or not like them. I don't care. I gain weight, lose weight. I mean, I've done that forever. I mean, I've never been a where my fat's hanging over a seat, which is, this is extremely disrespectful, but I don't have to place a judgment on that. It's disrespectful to the people you love. It's disrespectful to yourself. So if you don't care about yourself, you're not going to have any emotions uh, that are meaning meaningful toward me. Uh, I just got a whole list of but anyway, the, the more you the more you dig into that, the more you can think. All right, well, they more than likely have not been exposed to uh, well, like us, they they were in indoctrination camps uh, that most people call schools, and they didn't have the right guidance. They didn't have any mentor. They didn't have anybody giving them nutritional advice. They didn't have anybody showing them what respect for yourself is. And so they, they have this, this world of uh, issues wrapped around them, of being unexposed and, and ignorance that to some degree was not their fault. But then once you get to a certain thing, it, it is your fault. But that's not my fault. So what's now, I don't, the I don't best have way to, to educate? Well, I don't. I don't really care about them. Uh, uh, I'm caring about me because I have to work on me and my right. emotions toward them. And that's the best them. way to educate others. Right. Well, I can't. To, I can't. I can't. Even, when I say I don't care about them, like I don't care about them uh, as somebody that's ever going to be. I'm not ever going to get to know them. I, I don't need to know them. And if I ever do get to know one of them. Well, that's a whole different thing. That then that would start, uh, just like I've been a massive influence on my four adopted boys and all the people that come here and all the people that I'm uh, close to that keep wanting to maintain a relationship with me. It's because I do my best and work on myself and recognize my shortfalls and recognize whenever I'm irritated and I'm doing, seeking to be a better person all the time. Now, that's all we can I, ask. That's all we can ask. And I'm not going to uh, go out of my way to get to know somebody that I feel like, I, I don't have the time to educate you. I don't have the, I, I'm, I'm busy and just like everybody else. But if you happen to step somehow into my circle, I'm going to uh, start radiating some really positive examples to you really fast. Drip, drip. <laughs> Trip. <laughs> in Matt's case, the ducks. It's right, good. but you know, the, you thinking have, about love, <laughs> and I think it, when we talk about why do I love Matt, we're examining like why do I love somebody? Why do I love Jill? Uh, it's because how they make me feel. I don't feel, I don't love because I want to feel negative emotions. Mm. I, I, I'm not in that that vicious cycle of somebody that gets abused and can only feel loved and wanted if they continue to get abused. I like to be loved and give love from positive people that are people that are striving to be better in, in a well-rounded way throughout their life and recognizing their fallibilities. And I think that generates a, a love inside of me because I love it. Well, I want to be around Matt more. God, I sure hope he shows up on Sunday because I enjoy being around him. Yeah, I, I Thanks, hope Matt. I hope Jill uh, <laughs> continues to want to be around me. To yeah. show up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, God, thanks, Jill, for being here Sunday, <laughs> even though you live here. <laughs> I could be a little bitch and sit on stairs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could. And then that would be bad. Yeah, that would start. Oh, that, would, that, that would. That, that would. Yeah. Not, we would have to talk about that. Hopefully, you were open enough to understand it. And then it would be chiseling off some of that love, that big love rock, and we'd be going, "Oh, that's not good." That, that's what it would be. But I think the first thing is just recognizing. What do you say there? I mean, I think you have to recognize. Hey, I got these feelings. What do I do with them? Well, it's like. I mean, we've grown up our whole lives, so we know more about each other than things like that. You know my feelings and stuff, but I think now that, that I love coming out here is because I've told you a million times before, this is more therapeutic for me coming out here and talking, having these discussions, just talking. I don't talk this much during the week, <laughs> you know, much less, you know, on a Sunday talking for 45 minutes, an hour or whatever, but it, it's nice and it feels good to me 
that we could have these deep conversations. And and I, I love hanging out with you because we laugh and giggle and, and we, you know, and we, we have a whole life experience stuff. together. You know, and it's like nothing else matters as long as we're hanging out on a Sunday and it's like, I can't be late. I got to be there. Mm -hmm. I got I to gotta go. You know, I want to go see, you know, Jill and Kevin. I want to go hang out and with the them. And the ducks. <laughs> Another podcast about the ducks. Join us on uh, OnlyFans. Ducks. Duck, duck, yeah. Ducks. Duck, duck. With ducks. No. But, <laughs> well, but, I think uh, that really is, is sums it up is that you have to recognize your feelings, what they are, what causes them, how do you deal with them? Your safe space. Yeah, your safe you space. You feel safe to share your feelings. Right, and to know that the other side, once you start that process, that they're willing and able to reciprocate, that they're willing to absorb that and understand it and come to a common ground. Outside of that, uh, you have to, if that other person's not willing to do that, like your friend, then you, you cut that off. Or if they've been, been so disrespectful or so uh, disregarding of you, then there's just open space. You know, I, I don't need to see you. Then it's on me how I deal with those emotions. And I, now I don't really care what you are doing or not doing because that this is the line for me. Boundaries. This is the boundary. This is the boundary that you just crossed with me. And that is something that's unacceptable. And I don't want to be around you until that is resolved. And a lot of times those boundaries, once they're crossed, they don't get resolved. Mm -hmm. And if they do, there's always going to be this apprehension. There's always, it's never going to be the same. There's going to be a scar there that you're never going to forget with that friend. Mm -hmm. And they'll never be the same anymore. The trust level will never be the same. And all you can do at that point is, I got to deal with it inside. You, you manifest that out, whether it's writing in a journal, whether it's talking to yourself in the mirror, whether it's just taking a long walk, whatever it is, you figure it out because it's no longer that other person. You're, you're not able to talk to that other person anymore. But luckily for us, whenever we have any sort of issue, which have I mean, like, do you want to make the bed right now? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, that's that's do you have to change the sheets today or tomorrow? <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I mean, we really have this uh, very lucky relationship where we communicate a lot. So there, nothing builds up, which is good. Well, and something else, and you and Trey had talked about this in a podcast before, that when you're communicating, you might not want to do it right then. You might not. You might yeah. want to just take a little break, Are and I'm going to come back to this in a couple of hours. Would you be willing to talk to me about this later tonight, where I can think about it and dwell on it, and not willing to share my feelings just right this second? Very yes. good point. And, and that's what we used to do, like the beginning of these podcasts when I first started coming over. He'd wait. You'd wait till the last second, saying, "Well, how do you feel?" And I'm like, "Well, shit. Let me let me think about it." <laughs> Yeah, answer. hold up. Let me think about it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, let, I gotta let this marinate on. Let me think about it. But it was sometimes good because you just, like you said, you just off the top of your head. Here's here's what I think. Here's what how I feel. Here's here's what's going on. But yeah, but now I like it when you give me a day's notice to talk. <laughs> you're you're welcome. Thanks. You give me thirty minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing well, to you. How do you do to me? How do you get the initiation? Yes. <laughs> right. Well. Yeah. Thank y'all. I hope we didn't hurt anybody's feelings today. And if we did, you know, go figure it out on your own. Work yourself. Take a long walk, journal, whatever you need to do. But thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Of course, if you're in the local area, 1.30 every Sunday. And Rockfin, Big Sh No, not Rockfin. Bid Shoot, Rumble, whatever. A bunch of other ones, of course, YouTube. <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.